if you like science in school, stick at it. It's tough now, but stick at it. Follow your passion. Go to university, do science in university, and off you will go. You'll have a fantastic career. And if you make a discovery, it's the biggest thrill of all because you've found something nobody else has seen. You need to be creative to be a scientist. You get an idea. Just like an artist has to have a great idea if they're gonna do a new painting or whatever it might be, equally, science needs ideas and that needs creativity. So the overlap is really close. The biggest myth is that it's just like a flu and it's not, it's a very serious disease. So vaccines are not harmful is the bottom line really. Every health agency in the world says vaccinate your children. Every single one, you know. So the hope is people will listen and vaccinate. The book was, is all about how great science is really as a way to look at the world and to defy nonsense, shall we say, because science is all about data and supporting your bottom line with data. And it would have been a boring title, like Science Is Great. So over Christmas, I was suddenly inspired and I'm a big fan of the Sex Pistols, you see. And for some reason, Pretty Vacant came on the radio and that's off that album. Never mind the bollocks, here's the science. And I mocked up the cover. I put, never mind, I got the actual Sex Pistols cover and it had science instead of Sex Pistols. The publisher, I thought they'd say no. They said yes, it's great. So that, that, really, that really impressed me. They were gonna go with it, you know. 2020 so far? That's a tough question. <laughs> I read, um, I hate to say this for the umpteenth time, uh, a great book about the Beatles, <laughs> which is my passion. There's a, there was a biography of Paul McCartney by Philip Norman that I loved because I'm a big fan of the Beatles. And he, and he dug into the Beatles in a book called Shout. And then he apologised to McCartney with this book on McCartney. Oh, now a vaccine for COVID-19. There's an obvious answer. Uh, we're getting there with the vaccine. I think the second one will be penicillin though, antibiotics, because they've saved tens of millions and millions of people's lives. Oh God, well now I have to divide that between living and dead, I suppose. Well, living, it's a guy called Bill Campbell who won the Nobel Prize for Medicine uh, in 2015. He discovered a drug, he was working with a drug company called Merck, and this drug treats parasitic infections. Now, it was mainly for veterinary use, like things like roundworm and sheep and so on. And that was great actually for the veterinary industry, but then he realized there's parasitic diseases in humans, and one of them causes blindness in children. It's caused by a little worm in the eye, and he said this drug will cure river blindness. Did a trial, fantastic, it worked. Convinced Merck to give the drug away for free. That man from Donegal has stopped millions of children going blind. I mean, there is a great achievement in life, isn't it, for heaven's sake? So he's my hero. Who would I pick as a son? Well, a great one I've read recently, Ellen Hutchins. She was a fantastic botanist in the sort of late 1700s, early 800s in Kerry, in Bantry Bay and discovered all these seaweeds and lichens and was a very early environmentalist. And this is obviously when women were frowned upon for doing science, you know. She kept going and, and lots of species are named after her, you know. So I guess as a woman who, who or a, any scientist who just loves discovering things, and then, but she also knew then that there was an environmental issue to do with lichens and seaweeds. So she'd be my other hero. This feature is brought to you by Creative Ireland in partnership with RTE Supporting the Arts. Supporting artists. Supporting us.